Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and this is the new MacBook Pro. This is the 14 inch with the M3 Pro processor. So I thought we'd unbox it, take a first look, maybe run a few benchmarks and more. So this one, as you can see, is 14 inch. We have the new wallpaper here and it's in space black. If I flip it over, you can see here, it says MacBook Pro 14 inch and it's a 14 inch 12 core CPU, 18 core GPU, 36 gigabytes of RAM and four terabyte SSD. This ranges from $1,999 to $3,799. You can get it with five 12 gigabytes or up to four terabytes. Let's go ahead and unbox it. So we'll go ahead and pull these pull tabs here, unbox it like this, and let's flip it over. And this will be my first time seeing the new space black color. It's also available in silver. So we'll remove the top, set that aside, and here's the MacBook itself. Now before we unwrap that, let's take a look at the accessories. So we have an all new MagSafe cable and one thing they've done this time is the ends of these are actually space black. So they match along with it. It's a nice braided cable. And then also included in the box, we've of course got our paperwork here. Let's see what we've got. So it says MacBook Pro, just our quick start guide little warranty card, and then two black stickers. So that's nice. Typically you would get the black stickers with the Mac Pro. We'll set that aside. And then also we have a charger here with it. So if we open this up, take a look here, you'll see it's a typical charger that we get with Apple. And you'll see here on the side, it's the 96 watt variant. So that's available with the 14 inch. So let's set all of this aside and take a closer look at the MacBook itself. And again, this is the new space black color. It's in very dark gray, basically. I don't know that I'd call it space black, but it's supposed to be fingerprint resistant. And to compare it with space gray from the M1, this is actually an M1 Max. This will show you side by side what the colors actually look like. So it's more of a space gray, a dark space gray than it is a space black, but that's typical Apple at this point. And you can see what it looks like placing my fingers on it. I don't really see much of a fingerprint magnet here. However, with the MacBook Air with Midnight, I just push my fingers on it and it leaves some marks. On this one, it seems to be fairly resistant to it. So I guess they've done a good job there. Now this one has the same ports as we had before. So basically the same thing since we've had with the M1 Max. So we'll stand both of them up here and you'll see that we have HDMI, we have Thunderbolt, we also have an SD card slot. If we spin it around, it's the exact same again. We've got our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, two more Thunderbolt ports, as well as our MagSafe port. Everything else is the same as far as that goes. However, if you opt for the less expensive M3 variant, you'll actually be lacking one of the Thunderbolt ports. So keep that in mind, and it's only compatible with one monitor where we can power a couple monitors with this one. Let's go ahead and open it up here and take a closer look. So it boots up on its own. We'll remove this screen cover here. There we are. Now, one thing to note is the keyboard looks really good. It's the same keyboard, but being that it's black against sort of a darker finish, I think it looks really nice. Let's go ahead and set this up. So it's our typical hello screen. Let's go ahead and click here. Give it a second and see what it does. There we go. It wants us to select our language. We'll select English. Now we'll go ahead and select our country, United States for me, but it should automatically select where you're at, but you could choose it as well. We also have accessibility options if we want to set those up and then we can connect to Wi-Fi. Now it tells us about data and privacy. We'll click continue and then we can migrate from a different Mac to this one. I'll just skip this for now so we can get to the main screen and now we can sign in with our Apple ID. Now we'll create a password for the Mac. Now it will set up iCloud. Now it asks us to configure this to make this your new Mac and we can set location services, device analytics, app analytics, Siri, screen time, appearance, and wallet. I'll skip that for now and click continue. And then we can keep encryption on, turn it off. I typically keep it on. We'll go ahead and click continue. Now we'll set up touch ID. So we'll go ahead and do that. There we go. And notice there's a mark down here in the bottom, right? I keep leaving that from the palms of my hand. It wipes right off, but it's still something that actually shows up. So we'll go ahead and finish touch ID here. There we go. We'll click continue. So here's the desktop as you would expect. Let's first take a look at what version is actually pre-installed. So we'll go to about this Mac and this one actually comes with Mac OS Sonoma 14.1 with a build number of 23B2073. So we may or may not have an update. 
we should have a day one update, but some of these were actually shipping with Mac OS Ventura on the previous M3 14 inch version. So that's something we've been seeing today. Now let's go ahead and I'll install some software. We'll also test a few things as this has Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. Another thing worth noting is the display actually goes brighter for SDR content up to about 600 nits where before it was around 500. So it now matches that of the Mac studio display and everything else is going to be very familiar. So we'll test the speed and everything else. The camera is identical to the last one, so we won't test that necessarily, but let's go ahead and install different software so we can test a few different things. Now I've got all the software installed so we can test different things. And the first thing is if we go into our software update, I actually don't have an update. I thought there was going to be a day one update. Maybe it will show up later, but if I check for an update, it's actually already installed with the latest update that I mentioned before. Now, if we go into our wallpapers, there should be some new ones here. So there should be some new ones specifically for this Mac. So you'll see down here, if we slide over, we'll slide this over here. We have the new MacBook pro pro black. So that's the new wallpaper that's in the background. I'll link that in the description. If you'd like to try it out, if you don't have it already. Now let's go into disk speed test first and see what we've got. So this is disk speed test. I'll bring in an M1 Max MacBook Pro, my 14 inch that I use regularly. Now on the left, this is an M1 Max with 64 gigs of RAM and also eight terabytes of storage. On the right, of course, we have the M3 Pro. Let's go ahead and click start and see what we've got. Everything's on default and both of them are getting over 7,000 megabytes per second write speed and over 5,000 read speed. So we've got about 54 to 5,500 read speed on the M3 Pro, 55 to 5,600 read speed on the M1 Max, but very, very similar as far as the overall read and write speeds. Now, if we go into Geekbench, let's check that out. And again, on the left, you can see we have similar builds installed, although slightly different builds with the new one is there's no update, but that was expected. Let's go ahead and run CPU benchmarks and see what we get. Benchmarks completed, and as you can see on the left with the M1 Max, we have 2,409 for single core, 12,634 for multi-core. On the right with the new M3 Pro, we have 2,977 for single core, 13,068 for multi-core. So pretty close as far as that goes. If we run a GPU benchmark, GPU benchmarks completed, and we actually have 71,978 on the M1 Max, where we have 52,083 on the M3 Pro. Now let's close this out and take a look at another benchmark. Here we have Cinebench R23, let's go ahead and start that. Cinebench completed and the scores are definitely a little bit better on the M3 Pro with 13,140 for multi-core compared to 12,230 on the M1 Max. The same is true with single core, we have 1,858 points compared to 1,527 points. So definitely a little faster on Cinebench and it completed faster as well. Now within Final Cut Pro, I just cleared all of the generated media files. So we got rid of all of that so we can actually export this the same way. This is my iOS 17.1 is out video that I filmed on a Canon R5C in 8K. We're compressing it to 4K HEVC or H.265. We're sharing with the same custom preset. Let me bring in a stopwatch here. I'll just use an old iPhone 11 here. We'll click next and let's go ahead and click save. And then we'll just open the box so we can see when it actually finishes here and we'll press start. Final Cut Pro finished exporting and we're very close in speed. The M1 Max was 8 minutes and 53 seconds, where the M1 Pro was 8 minutes and 58 seconds. So very little difference there, and that's great considering you're going from an M1 to an M3 that doesn't have the top of the line processor. Now as far as... Now, I personally don't regularly use Blender, but many people want to see how it performs. So here's benchmarks directly from Blender. Let's see what we've got. Blender benchmarks finished and we have 211.71 for the M1 Max and for the M3 Pro we have 236.56. So it's a little bit better as far as that goes. And if we scroll down, you can see that it ranks in 61% of all benchmarks where 64% of all benchmarks is where it ranks for the M1 Max. Now we're in Blender 4.0 beta. I actually have ray tracing turned on and we're using the GPU on both devices. Let's go ahead and see how long it takes to render. So we'll go to render and we're using classroom here. So we'll go to render and then render image. 
both completed and the M3 Pro took five minutes, 57 seconds. The M1 Max took six minutes, 49 seconds. So definitely a little bump in performance there. If we close this out and maybe move around the viewport here. So let's switch to a rendered view. Give it a second here to render. And if we start to move around it, you'll see it's not great performance. If we do the same thing on this scene here, so again, rendered, start to move around it. The fans did spin up quite a bit as well. So that gives you an idea of what it looks like as we're moving around the, the viewport. It's not great. It takes forever to render. And if maybe you had an RTX 4080, 4090, you would definitely see better performance here. So you can see what that looks like. Just moving around, letting it render a little bit more. It's not great there, but we'll check out the M3 Max a little bit later. In using both of these, I noticed with Wi-Fi 6E on the new M3 MacBooks, it seemed to be a little bit faster as far as downloading the same applications at the same time as I've been testing Blender and things like that. We also have Bluetooth 5.3 and battery life is the same if you're coming from an M2. However, you get an hour longer as far as an M3 over an M1. So it just depends on which device you have. You'll actually get a lot more battery life on the 16 inch up to 22 hours. So depending on what you're using it for, if you want the larger 16 inch, that's where you'll get the best battery life. Now, as far as anything else, that's all we'll take a look at for now. If you wanted to see anything else with gaming or things like that, let me know in the comments below what specifically, hopefully I've covered a majority of things that are relevant to you. But if you want me to test this further in a longer review, let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.